<laughs> just so our goal today is to just kind of talk about and kick off the five day accessibility challenge. We uh, we decided not to run a 10 day challenge this year. Um, in part, we thought that that might just be a little overwhelming. And so we shifted to the idea of a five day challenge and we've kind of broken it up into um, a couple parts. And so we wanna talk about what's happening, who's participating, how it's going to work um, and what resources you have available and how you can get your questions answered. And so, the purpose of this challenge is really uh, to help shift the culture of accessibility um, on the campus and to give you the tools to create accessible content. Um, it's a big task. There's a whole bunch of information. Um, but the key thing is some really small, simple steps that you can deploy. Uh, can make a huge difference. And so don't worry about trying to get everything understood and implemented right off the bat. The goal is to, to start small and uh, have a big impact that way. And we're doing this in a proactive way. And this is a, a cartoon uh, that really, really should hit home, <laughs> I guess, especially on a day like today. Um, the, the idea is that if you create accessible content, accessible pathways, it's available to everyone with no, uh, issues whatsoever. And as I said, some small steps can make that very, very beneficial. I don't remember who is going to talk about the participants. Am I doing it? I am. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Casey. Hey, everybody. I'm Michelle. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a former accessibility fellow. Um, and I'm part of the work group on accessibility practices. So I'm happy to be here uh, with all of you today. And I'm excited to talk a little bit about uh, who is going to be uh, participating and joining all of you on this journey this week. Um, so I think it's important to note that uh, when we first envisioned these types of challenges a few years ago now, um, we really wanted to make sure that we created activities that could um, be interesting and beneficial to everybody on campus, right? So this includes uh, faculty, students, staff, administrators, just anybody that you can think of. So, so the request to participate and the way that we've promoted it has been really casting a broad net. Um, you can move slides, Casey, but um, what I would say is that this year we have just over 100 people um, signed up to participate, which is awesome. Um, that is slightly under what we did last year, but, but we're still stoked and excited that that means that we've got now hundreds of people on campus learning about accessibility and really uh, kind of helping us to champion um, this, this cause and change the climate on campus around accessibility. Um, I will also say that we have some familiar faces. So some of you are alumni returning and we're so glad to have you back. Um, we have tried to, uh, other than shortening the challenge, we've tried to change up some of the content a little bit, uh, give folks the opportunity to maybe level up some skills. So um, we've got um, both uh, what I would say is uh, beginning experts and then novices getting kind of underway with us. So um, we are, are happy to have you back um, and we're happy to see those of you who are just joining us for the first time. The participants have been uh, kind of split up. We, we've been asking you some information, right, along the way, both in your sign-up form as well as um, those of you who have uh, filled out a pre-survey. Thank you very much. If you haven't done that, please um, kind of give that a go this week. We're just trying to get a handle on what you know so far and um, how we can maybe um, help drive and kind of create content in the future. Um, but what I can tell you is that there's um, a, a pretty good mix, right? We've got um, just about a third of the population is faculty, third staff, and then the rest is broken up between our students and administrators. So, um, so that is, tells me that it's a nice diverse group of people and we'll have, be able to have some interesting conversations across groups. 
beyond just um, kind of having a pretty diverse and broad cross-section of, of groups represented, I think that we also um, really, you can see here, just are um, having people join from all areas, um, you know, departments, uh, different uh, kind of organizations and groups across campus. And that to me is really exciting. Um, there, This is not, you know, um, just focused on one of the academic units or, um, you know, a specific administrative group. And you can really see that here that we've got uh, people coming and joining us from across campus. And that um, I think is another really exciting kind of component to this is that maybe you'll get the opportunity to, to interact with some people or get to know them that you haven't met before. And then the last thing oh, you, you can, yeah, thank you. The last thing that I, I just wanted to, to kind of highlight um, is one thing that we've asked you about is, is why you decided to, to join and participate. Um, I think Casey's kind of given you an idea of why we are doing the challenge, but for me, I'm always curious about uh, why folks are signing up and what appeals to them about this. And so a few points that I wanted to highlight um, is, is first uh, this idea of uh, kind of opening our minds or becoming more aware to something that we're not familiar with. And that, um, that to me makes a lot of sense when I think about this challenge. Many of you um, may have never even kind of really dug into the idea of accessibility, much less tried to start creating accessible materials. Um, uh, kind of the next two points I think are, are great is this idea of using the challenge as a way to connect with other uh, people for like during that learning experience and, and having fun with it. Um, you know, we don't call this a training intentionally. It is a challenge, something that we are encouraging you to have fun with. And so uh, I'm pleased to see that that some people that that kind of idea is resonating as well. And then the last two um, kind of quotes that that came from some of the pre surveys that I think make a lot of sense as well, is this idea of of not just learning uh, these concepts ourselves, but then being able to help share them across campus. Um, and whether that is becoming a resource in your own space or amongst your own kind of network, um, or just kind of contributing to this broader culture of accessibility that we're working to cultivate on campus. Um, so, so those I think are a good cross section of reasons. I'm sure each of you have some of your own that, that may be similar or totally different from this. I hope none of it is that you've been forced into it by somebody, but, um, but we're happy to we're have, have you all here. And, and I think that Kate's gonna tell you a little bit next then about um, exactly how it's structured and, and what, what to expect each day. Great, thank you, Michelle. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Kate Percival. I am the web and digital content coordinator here on campus, also a part of the work group and heavily involved in accessibility um, things happening around campus. So as Michelle said, uh, we'd like to make this sort of fun, engaging, um, rather than telling people they had to get into accessibility and they had to make their materials accessible. We wanted to try to find a way to bring people in and invite them. This is what you want to do because it's good for us. It's good, it's fun. Um, so yeah, Casey, you can go ahead and go to the next one. So the activities, um, as we call them, within the campus are meant to be very flexible, very customizable. Um, we try to provide as many different pathways for as many different people as possible. Um, there will be daily emails that are sent out every morning. I know there was a little bit of a mishap with this morning's, but they should be sent out by 6 a.m. or so every morning throughout this week um, that provide you some information about the topic that's going to be discussed for that day. And then we'll direct you to um, some other links and resources of where you can get more information. The options are meant to be self-directed. We offer these live synchronous sessions throughout um, the breakout period to try to help kind of push things along to help give you lots of information. But the challenge itself is structured in a way that um, even if you don't come to these live sessions, you are able to follow the steps and get the resources and get the information and do things on your own time. Um, as Casey mentioned in the beginning, we have two levels this year. We have our beginner level or level one, which kind of covers many of the basics. Um, and then because we are, um, because we have done this challenge or a similar challenge previously, and we have more and more people who are starting to become involved in accessibility, we added a level two of more advanced topics to try to take a, a little bit of a deeper dive, try to move up the ladder a little bit, so to speak. Um, so both of those options are available to the 
participants. Um, you can choose either path. You can try to do both if you want. If you start with level one and decide that it's, you know, you've already done this, you're familiar with it, jump over to the level two tasks and give those a shot. Um, if you start with level two thinking, oh, I know what's going on, and you decide that it's a little bit too advanced for you, then hop back down to level one and uh, get caught back up. So we do offer, again, numerous pathways, redundant information to try to get people as much, um, as much of those resources as possible. And then we offer a reflection and feedback period at the end, um, just to kind of talk about what it is or kind of assess for yourself um, what it is that you've learned, some of the things that you maybe have become better at, some of the things that you feel a little more confident about. Um, and we do offer a certificate of completion at the end. So you have a, a tangible thing that says, yes, I did this program and I learned something and um, you know, I'm part of the initiative. So again, we're trying to make it fun and engaging. Um, as I mentioned, we do have lots of resources and support that we can provide to you. Some of those include the daily drop-in sessions. Um, these are held from 2 to 3 every day, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. every day for the next two weeks until January 21st. They are hosted by various members of the work group, also former accessibility fellows. Um, they are meant to provide a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, um, to answer questions, try to get over some roadblocks or barriers, um, help people with issues that you just can't find on the website or you're not, you know, you're not getting the results that you want. Um, you can stop into these question and answer periods each afternoon and ask your specific question. Um, and one of the work group members should be able to sort of step you through and, and help you figure out the best, um, the best solution. Um, some of the other resources that we have include our digital accessibility website, which is oswego.edu slash accessibility. Um, we have lots of information on there, lots of tutorials, lots of um, both written and video tutorials. So much of the information that you will be given in the daily emails will be found on the accessibility website as well. Uh, you can also email any member of the work group or Casey, Michelle, or myself. Um, my email is kathleen.percival at oswego.edu. Casey's is casey.raymond at oswego.edu and Michelle's is michelle.thornton at oswego.edu. Um, on our accessibility webpage, there is a page or website rather, there is a page that lists all of the com um, committee members. Uh, so if you need some individual support and you don't feel like coming to the drop-in or you're not able to come to the drop-in and you just wanna email someone uh, specifically, you can catch any of the three of us or go on the website and find, uh, see if there's anyone else on there that you would like to email individually. And I'm sure someone would be willing to help you out. Um, a couple more sessions that are coming up today. We skipped one there, Casey. Uh, a couple of other sessions that are coming up today. One o'clock this afternoon is an accessibility discussion group um, hosted by Michelle. And then as I just mentioned at two o'clock is the um, drop-in session. So, and that's all that I have. If there's any other questions from anyone, we'd be happy to address them. Hey, I just wanted to note, um, I put the link to the um, article that we'll be discussing today in the discussion group in the chat right. box. Uh, if you don't have time to read it before one o'clock, no problem at all. Um, the conversation will be very informal and uh, just an opportunity for us to start kind of digging into some of the concepts um, that you've begun hearing about so far today. Yeah, and as Casey mentioned at the beginning, I'll reiterate too, um, accessibility is, I, I compare it to a huge mountain. It's just this mountainous um, amount of information that can become very, very, very overwhelming. But we do not expect everyone to be experts by the end of the week. Um, our hope is to just feed you up bite-sized pieces, small steps that you can take one little baby step at a time um, to try to make some big improvements. And, and even the smallest of steps will make big improvements in your documents and materials. So even though it may seem like you're not really amounting to much, um, it does have a big impact. So do folks have questions, thoughts on how this is going to go? Is everyone excited to be a part of this challenge? Uh, Casey, the email I got today in the morning, 
it say two o'clock? Yeah, there was there was a hiccup in terms of how the email went out this morning. But it did go out late, but it got out. All the other emails will go out uh, by six. Um, just so everybody knows, you can schedule emails with yet another mail merge, but you can only schedule one mail merge at a time. I'd scheduled them all week and it was all ready to send the one on Friday. <laughs> Lessons learned as we go along, right? I have a quick question. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I did this last year and we did a whole thing with Duval University. Is that going to be available again this year? It was wonderful. I think I got that right. DeCue University, do you mean? DeCue, I'm sorry. DeCue, yes. I knew it started um, with D. Sorry. Yeah, someone else just asked a question about DeCue in chat as well. There is a sign-up form that you have to submit, and then um, your name or account has to be like approved, basically, but it's a very quick process. And yes, DeCue is available, and all of the courses that are within the DeCue, cor um, DeCue site should be available, not just ones that we specifically choose for you. So you should be able to submit that form and log in uh, once it's approved, and then you can kind of scroll through and, and do what you'd like with DeCue. It's there to use, so please use it because they are excellent resources. Maybe uh, this is a quick question for Dan, uh, since he's here with us. Um, if somebody signed up for DQ as part of the last challenge last year, do they have to get approved um, or can they still use their logins from before? That's a very good question. Um, I believe that those accounts are still available. Uh, if not, if you have any trouble with your account or accessing DQ, uh, send me an email, daniel.laird at oswego.edu, and uh, I can contact their uh, support people. And if you haven't signed up yet for DQ and want to, I send an email every day of the collected responses. So if you don't immediately get access, it's because I haven't gotten a chance to send your request on to them. So it's a bit of an unautomated uh, process. So just uh, it'll usually get done within 24 hours. So So I have a question. So this morning I was clicking the, the email, like, you know, the links that you guys have provided. And all of a sudden I got the email saying, welcome to the TQ University. Is that something that I should expect or it's not necessary? I was a little confused about that. You should only get an email from the queue if you have signed, if you signed up through the form on our website, I send it along to them. And then you should get an email from them saying that, you know, like a welcome email and uh, something with your um, how to log in. So that should, if you've signed up for it, then you should be getting an email from DQ. I see. So it says like the SUNY all campuses and uh, SUNY all campus full curriculum. That's what the email is saying that I have access. Yep, that should be what you get. Thank you. Yep. All right, well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I think this was supposed to be a really short session, so um, there's no other questions. I guess we'll call it a day for now. Join Michelle at one o'clock for the discussion. The uh, reading is in the chat. If you need to take a look at that real quick. And uh, good luck with the challenge. Let us know if you have any questions. And I hope to see you again throughout the week as we have more of these uh, synchronous sessions going on. <laughs>